and welcome in everybody glad you're with us the show has an nl east matchup it's the miami marlins going up against the atlanta braves john chomby chris singleton with you and a big time win streak is on the line today chris no one's really sure how much a manager impacts wins and losses over the course of the season but i'll say right now this manager has been making all the right moves First pitch moments away, and today's starter, Chris Sale. What do you look for here? Comes into this start sporting a lifetime ERA just over three. He's been pretty great for most of his big league career. Can't wait to watch him in this one. Ready to go now. Stepping in is the switch hitting shortstop, Vidal Brujan. The why to kick the pitch. Hard hit left side. Throw on to Olsen. One up, one down. Okay, let's check out the lineup. One thing these guys do very well is stay out of the double play. They've hit into the fewest of any team in the league, Chris. Well, Boog, we don't see situational hitting as that art as much as we used to because guys are slugging the ball, they're hitting over the fence. But when you see a team that has the ability to shorten up, hit behind runners, and go first to third or first to home, man, that just adds to the element of what you're able to do in other ways with the bat. So opposing pitcher better not walk anybody or give them free base runners because oh, these guys know what to do when men are on. Sale delivers. That one fouled off. Sale ready. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Well, that's a blue zone right there or the cold zone on the hitting chart. Just doesn't have much success in that part of the strike zone. And a really good job of the pitcher executing. Try to go there as often as you can. The numbers are in your favor. Next offering is in for a strike. One of my favorite stats all time, 1997, the Hall of Famer Craig Biggio played in all 162 games for the Astros on Astro turf, and he never hit into a double play. And sale deals. Caught him looking for the K. And the Marlins down quietly. And now the Braves will get their first crack at it. No score. You're dialed into the show. Back here at the ballpark and towing the slab, Sandy Alcantara. Well, he got into the eighth inning his last time out, really pitching deep into games as of late. We'll see today how many innings he's got in him. Now in for the Braves, Ronald Acuna Jr. This guy is an elite level hitter, especially considering contact, just the ability to hit for average. What you really like, though, stays in against those righties, and that's not so easy as a right-handed batter. One gone, bottom half of the first. Here's Brian Snickers lined up for the Braves. This is a ball club that can really slug. Lots of homers, lots of extra base hits. And Chris, that of course, a huge part of success in the standings for this group. Well, if you're gonna be successful in today's game, you've got to be able to hit the ball over the fence. Just defensively, very hard to find the holes. And when you're talking about guys, you know, coming out of the bullpen, throwing 95 and above, very difficult. It's hard to string together two, three, four hits to score those runs. So definitely critical to hit those homers, get the extra base knocks, and that's exactly what they've been doing. That's a bullet, but it goes foul. One down, base is empty. Swings and crushes one. Right field, way back, and gone. That one felt good. His 56th home run of the season. And the Braves had the lead now. It's 1-0. That's his third straight game with a homer, Singy. This dude is on fire, boom. These kinds of streaks just don't come around too often.
There was a sinker up in the zone. It looked like it came out of the pitcher's hand a little bit too early. Doesn't have the velocity that that good four-seam fastball does. And at the plate, he didn't miss it. Ozzie Albies up to the plate. Homered last night, added another hit as well. And there's a foul ball. You know, power is such a big part of the success that we see with the good teams in the league right now and even in the postseason. There's a high chopper. Tosses to the pitcher covering the bag. And Albies is retired. It's a good recovery, though, after giving up the home run. Not allowing it to stay in the head, but going to work at the next hitter, and a tough one at that. Two outs, space is empty. Next to hit, Michael Harris. Foul ball. Hammer, base hit. And that's going to roll to the wall. Now he'll turn for second, and he's in there. It's a first inning double. And for him, that's two solid weeks with a hit in every game. I mean, he's run his hitting streak to 14, and let me tell you, that's no easy task. This guy's grinding out at bats. He's figuring out ways to put the ball in play and just as well do it with some authority. Man in scoring position with two away. Sean Murphy digs in now. Hitless and four at bats yesterday. Swings and misses. Strike one. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. Harris rounds third headed for the plate not in time he's safe and they take a two run lead picks himself up an RBI pretty tough for the infielders to do anything with that one he pulled it hard into the outfield and even when you keep it on the ground it feels great when you hit a missile like that here's Jerry Kelnick what a season it's been for him he has supplied a lot of power and that average and he hits a ground ball right side. He takes it on his own. Out number three. But two runs for him, and they jump ahead. End of the first from Truist Park. It's the Braves two, and the Marlins nothing. Back here in Atlanta, stepping in the long ball threat, Jake Berger. And a pitch. So after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. Tries to hold up, appeal to first, and he held up. The 1 1. Comes up empty. That's strike two. Singy strikeouts are king these days. And entering the 2023 season, Chris Sale holds the big league record. He is the leader, most strikeouts per nine innings. That misses the zone. Two balls, two strikes. Well, one thing about Chris Sale is he's got such a devastating slider, and it doesn't matter if you're a left hander or a right hander. If you're a lefty, it's going away from you. If you're a righty, it's coming at that back right foot. Here's a 2-2. The punch out there. Down on strikes. And he knew it. Well, he throws him with the change up right there. And I think he was so geared up for fastball. Once he recognized that it was off speed, he just wasn't able to make an adjustment. So a really good strikeout. And pitcher just won the battle. Christian Bethencourt batting with one down. Takes a strike. Good defender. He's been inconsistent offensively. Next offering is in for a strike. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. 
Yeah, there's no doubt, Boog. Electric stuff from the jump. I mean, there's just no messing around right now. It's still very early, but we could see a pretty impressive outing here if the strikeouts keep coming in the way they are. One thing you have to be aware of, though, is a high strikeout rate might impact the pitch count as the innings roll on. The 0-1. And that one fouled off. Chris Sale looking for that shutdown inning. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the A.B. going. The 0-2. Hit in the air, right field. And it falls. Joey gets on base and keeps it going. Still able to come through behind in the count right there. I don't know how he's able to shoot that pitch the other way and still put something on it. That pitch was inside, and he let it get really deep. So pretty incredible hands to fight it off and still get good wood on it. Carrara Encarnacion in the box here lets that one go for a ball. Here comes a pitch. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Peyton Burdick will hit next. Swing and a foul straight back. Well, the offense really struggled last night. I mean, it was awful. So I, I think picking up a run right here, that's going to get him going a little bit. Barry at second, and Carnacion on at first with two down. Swing and a miss. And it's nothing in two. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and mess, and you walk off the field. Back at Truist Park, ready to go for the last half of the inning. Here's Marcelo Zuna. The wind of the pitch. Swing and a base hit. Wastes no time there. Nice line drive to the pull side right there, but he didn't spin off of it. That's the key. You still have to extend through the baseball in order to hit a line drive like that. Here's Luis Guillorme. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. Swing and a line drive. Base hit out of the center field. Didn't exactly square that one up, but sometimes you don't have to. Just a simple soft liner into center field for the knock right there. Maybe a little bit fooled by the pitch, but he did a good job of staying through it, and that allowed him to fight it off and just get enough behind it. Here's Orlando Arcia. And foul ball. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. They say it went. No ball, two strikes. First and second here, no outs. Here's a rocket out to left. Bethancourt calls it in, and there's one away. The right field, number 13, Ronald Acuna Jr. 
And here is Ronald Acuna Jr. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. Hit on the ground might be two. There's one. And that's two. Nothing across on two base hits. No errors and one man left. We play two full. It's the Braves two and the Marlins nothing. New inning getting started. And now for the Marlins, Nick Fortes. Fortes in his second season hitting ninth in today's lineup and he was drafted in the fourth round back in 2018. The big lefty turns kicks deals. That's to third. Slings it across gets the catcher by a step. And now it's Vidal Bruhan grounded out his first time. Strike one. And strike two. Got him looking. Throws him with a backdoor slider. Well, he made pretty quick work of him right there. You look at the sequence, everything down at the knees and below. And some guys are good low ball hitters, but right there, they clearly had a plan to pound that part of the zone, and he wasn't able to put up much of a fight. Josh Bell at the plate now. In there, and it's 0-1. Bell measures 6 feet 4 inches, 260 pounds, and he won the Silver Slugger at his position in the National League last year. And he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. Ahead 0-2 in the count, sure, you've got four pitches you can work with, but throw something you can command and get this at bat over with as quickly as possible. Swing and a miss, and he's down on strikes. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Miami down in order. They trail it here 2-0. Bottom of the inning, down the number two hitter, Matt Olson. The right hander back to work. And that one is lifted in the air. Burdick sizes this one up, brings it in with a nice running grab. And a quick out, number one. Here is Ozzy Albies up to hit. Albies, multi-time all-star, 26 years old, and he's a native of Curacao. He swings and fouls one off. Kicks and deals. Strike two. Hey, he doubled up on the off-speed there. We talk about the power fastball, but he's working a little differently here. Swing and a miss struck him out. Well, he didn't want to go after him with the fastball at all and that at bat. Now Nothing but off-speed stuff. Even with all the change-ups coming, somehow he was still early on the swing. So I think he had to be thinking it was only a matter of time until he saw some heat. Line drive, base hit right field. So a two-out knock keeps the inning alive. Couple of hits in a row for him here. That's a good sound coming off the bat, man. And as he connected out front and ripped it into the outfield, that's one of those swings where you just don't even feel the ball hit the barrel. That's a pure stroke. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Here's Sean Murphy. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. Swing and a ball ripped out towards right center field. That'll touch down for a hit. 
Across is the runner from first. It's three zip. Murphy into second, and he's got a double. Went up there looking to be aggressive and got something he could handle. Pretty much a model swing on that one as he ripped it into the opposite field gap, and I'm sure he's going to be watching that one back on video because that's the kind of swing you want to bottle. So many positives that led to that knock. Now the left fielder, Jared Kellner. That to right. And Carnacion puts the squeeze on that one. That is the inning. But a run will score in the inning on this RBI double. It's now 3-0. Back after this on the show. Start of the fourth, Luis Arise stands in. When he steps into the batter's box, the comfort level looks so high. It doesn't matter what kind of delivery that pitcher has, what kind of velocity, what kind of secondary stuff. He is so settled in there, he owns the home plate area. Off the mark there, and one and one. The 1-1 is fouled off. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. One and two now. Sale. Swing at a ball lifted to center field. Makes a nice run and catch. And there's one down. Now here's the cleanup hitter for Miami. Jake Berger. His first at bat was a strikeout. In there for strike one. On one. Swing and a miss, and he was fooled. You know, Brooke, every team has a hitter's meeting pregame, but this lineup seems way too anxious, aggressive. You wonder what they talked about. And down on strikes. Two gone. Probably showing some pretty dominating stuff out there in this one, not just in terms of swing and miss, but also in terms of command. You know, all the strikeouts, they just kind of speak for themselves, but when you don't walk anyone, you're demonstrating that you have the confidence in your abilities to truly go right after opposing batters. And now the lefty. There's a strike. One and one. One and two now. Sail back to work. Three. Right through there. Got him. That's his second strikeout. Nothing doing for the Marlins. They trail in this one. Three nothing. Welcome back. Bottom of the fourth. Here's a big power threat. Marcelo Zuna. Alcantara back to work. Fought off foul. Right hander kicks deals. There's a strike. Well, he looks fresh out there. Just. Needs to get a little more confidence and remember how good he's been in the past. Line drive. Puts it away for the out. Nothing you can do about those as a hitter. Even though you know that, they still drive you absolutely crazy. Here's the third baseman, Luis Guillorme. One for one with a single so far. Out towards right center field, and that'll fall for a base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. 
Well, clearly he was ready to hit right there. You know what they say, he couldn't have thrown it out there any better than that, and certainly the case that time. Just flared it back behind the second baseman and dropped it in there. So now to the plate for Atlanta, Orlando Arcia. That's to third. Dives, but it kicks off his glove. To first, and he beats it. Everyone's safe. And here is Ronald Acuna Jr. He's got the power, but great contact skills. One of the best contact hitters in the game. On the ground to third. Fair ball! Guillaume around third. He'll score easily, and they lead by four. Well, here we are, third time through the order, and this is where we see the OPS jump up. Manager might have to go to the bullpen a little bit sooner than he anticipated. Here is Matt Olson. One for two with a solo home run back in the first inning. Hit well. Right field way back and gone. Matt Olson goes deep. His second home run of the game, and they add to their lead. It's 7-0. Now he's just showing off out there, and who can blame him with a swing like that? Give that man a bat, watch it go a long way. Love to see a hitter aggressive on the first pitch of an at bat. You watch him from the on deck circle, so when you step in the box, you're ready to pull the trigger wherever it's at. Really good job by the hitter, total conviction on that swing. Here comes a skipper out of the dugout, and he's ready to make the move. Sandy Alcantara won't go any further. We'll be back in a minute with a new arm on the mound. So the Marlins go with a new arm, Edward Cabrera. They know that he can get a right-hander out, but he's in position to face a couple of lefties this inning. Cabrera. So up next, Ozzie Albies. Struck out on just three pitches last time. And first offering is fouled off. Part of the order coming through now, and with one home run already in this inning, they're definitely looking to do some more damage. Here comes the 0-1. And that's just foul. So close to possible extra bases right there. Just couldn't keep it fair down the line. Oh, and two now. Swings through it for the K. Pulled the string on the changeup. Now the Atlanta cleanup hitter, Michael Harris, singing. He's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. How difficult is that to do? Well, I'll just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great. Here's a drive out to right center. Way back there. Look out. Gone. His 18th home run of the season, and they tack one on the board. It's 8-0. Singy, the ball is jumping off his back. Yes, it is. Tons of loud contact. Man, it's been impressive. A breaking ball on the inside part of the plate requires a hitter to stay really square with his mechanics. If you fly open with the front shoulder, there's no way you keep that ball fair. An outstanding job mechanically. He deserves that home run. So here's Murphy now. Really good piece of hitting last time going to the opposite field. 
Ground ball left side. Tosses across the first. Gets him easily. Ends the inning. But the long ball was working in this inning. Not once, but twice. It's now an 8 nothing game. Welcome back. We go to the top of the fifth. And at the plate for Miami, Jacob Berry. Well, every pitcher wants run support, and having a lead is nice, but it can be challenging for some guys. I think keeping the mindset to attack instead of trying to be too fine and have too much finesse, go after hitters and get quick outs. Now this is in the air down the line, and he can't quite get there. It's a foul ball. The wind of the pitch. Gets a piece and stays alive. The pitch. Gets a piece and it stays 0-2. Also really good at bat. What I like about this guy, his bat stays in the zone for a long time. Gives him the ability to foul off tough pitches. Started after it, tried to hold up. Now a look to first, and that's ruled a swing. It's a strikeout. Pretty electric stuff showing up on the mound right now. I mean, in the double-digit strikeouts, he should be able to rack up some more before he's done in this one. And you know, not many of these hitters have had much of an answer for what he's offering out there. Now it's the right fielder, Perar Encarnacion. And he's already singled in this game. And a foul ball. The 0-1. That's outside. Right. And there's a strike. One ball, two strikes. Got him looking for the K. Throws him with the heater at the knees. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. And up next for Miami, Peyton Burdick. And first offering is fouled off. And there's a breaking ball that drops in there. Well, this offense has just been locked down. Almost five full innings of shutout baseball. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. Back here at the ballpark, we head to the bottom of the fifth. Now in for the Braves, Jared Kellner. The pitch. Left field, way back there. That's back. And gone! He flexes his power with that swing. His 13th home run of the season, it's 9-0.
that's an impressive swing of the bat to go over the wall to the opposite field gap. And, you know, there are a lot of guys that just don't have the pop to do that, and probably just as many who don't have the approach either. He let that ball travel, and he got great extension on the follow-through to drive it out of here. Ozuna in the box now as he leaves that one up high. And the 1 0. You see the velocity 97 with that fastball. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Ryan Weathers getting loose out there. Righty to the plate. This one popped up right side. Bell calls it in, and there's one away. Now that the third baseman, Luis. And yeah, the batter now, Luis Guillorme. And a base hit into right center field. Oh, this has been a really nice game at the plate for him. He looks locked in. Nice line drive to the pull side. Met it out front, but just stayed through it nice enough and ripped it into the outfield. And the batter will be the shortstop, Orlando Arcia. pitch and a swing and a miss there everyone can have a little chuckle there he's had such a great season rarely ever do you see that kind of swing swing and a miss struck him out and there's two away not a very good curveball right there but sometimes those high breaking balls kind of surprise you as a hitter and when they stay high have just a little more velo on them to get by you and that two strike count I thought was a pretty good pitch to hit I think he got a little too excited and tried to do too much. And a foul ball. Guillaume, the runner at first with two gone. And a pitch. And that one just oh, missed off the outside edge. It's a good take. On the ground to third. Oh, he throws it away. Well, an error like that, you look at the scoreboard and you kind of wonder if these guys are losing focus out there. And look, it, it can be tough to stay locked in when you're getting blown out. We've all been there. And I'm not saying that's definitely what happened on this play, but it's not a great look. First and second, two down. Matt Olson next up for the Braves. Hit an absolute tape measure shot last time up. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. Burdick makes the catch, and that'll do it. Braves get one on the big fly. It's now 9-0. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back at Truist Park, start of the six, John Shambi with Chris Singleton, and leading off, Nick Fortes. Sale, back to work. And there's the strike. Clearly down in this ball game, and you can't look at the deficit and try to get it all back in one swing. It's got to come one at bat at a time and even shrink it down smaller, pitch to pitch. Make that guy on the mound work to get you out. Got it by him for the K. 
Well, that at bat seemed to be over as soon as it started. Three pitch strikeout. You've got to be better at the plate right there, at least to foul something off, extend that at bat. And now for the Marlins, Vidal Brujan. Went down looking on three pitches last time. Let's see if he can be a little more aggressive right here. Ball one, no strikes. He's been going after these guys consistently, and as a result, he's been able to keep his pitch count low. Throwing the ball very well right now. Kicks and fires. And that one hammered. That's back there. It one hops off the wall, should be extra bases. Round second, digging for third. Albies with a relay throw in there safely. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Put a really nice balanced swing on it. And when you can rope one into the gap like that, you're thinking extra bases from the first couple of steps out of the box. And he'll feel real good about that one. So one gone with a runner at third. Next to switch hitting first baseman, Josh Bell. Who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. When a guy's throwing a lot of first pitch strikes as a hitter, you got to be ready to hit. Now, that's not going to help you get deep into his pitch count and into the bullpen, but you got to take what he's offering that day. Started to go after it. Now a look down to first. No swing. He held up. Darrell Parker with the call there. Next offering misses. Now two and two. This is a situation where the hitter is looking for something up in the zone that he can get his arms extended. What you have to be careful of is that pitch that's up, that's in on your hands. That'll pop you up in the infield, and that's exactly what the pitcher wants. Check swing on the 2-2. Appeal to first. Did not go. One away with a runner at third. Goes down looking for the strikeout. He's got to be frustrated with that call. A big performance on the mound. Lots of strikeouts. That was number 14. Yeah, clearly trusted his stuff in this one, Boog. Feeling really good about what he's working with, and that really allows a guy to attack hitters. You know, such an important mindset to have out there on the mound, especially when you're ahead in the count with two strikes. Arise stands in now and watches strike one. Left-hand hitter waits. Check swing, no appeal, and a count even one and one. Two outs and one in scoring position. Strike three, got him looking on the changeup. One hit, one left. Part of the order, three, four, five coming up. Braves nine and the Marlins nothing. Bottom of the sixth inning. So now to the plate for Atlanta. Ozzie Albies. And the right hander back to work. Crushed to right, and that one's going to lead the park. Out of here. Home run. Ozzie Albies goes yard. His 42nd home run of the season. And they add a run. It's 10-0. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate that he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. Ryan Weathers will take over here. And with the big deficit on the scoreboard, he almost has to just put that out of his mind. Every outing matters for relievers and their numbers, but I think it's tough to get up for this type of appearance the same way you would for one in a close game. And now it's Atlanta's cleanup hitter, Michael Harris. 
lifted in the air right center field arise after it no trouble here puts it away for the out and there's one down God, that's a tough play for the infielder ranging back into the outfield there's part of him that's saying hey where are you at outfielder call me off but he stayed focused and made a nice catch right there here's the catcher Sean Murphy and first offering is fouled off Weathers in his second season he features a four seam fastball a slider a two seamer and he works in a changeup. Drilled the left center way back there, and that is gone. An absolutely majestic shot. His 18th home run of the season, and they boost their lead. It's 11 0. Just an excellent swing all the way around, and it had that sound coming off the bat that gets everyone's attention. Got a pitch to drive, short to the baseball, squared it up, and the backspin carried it out of here. Jared Kellner, next up for the Braves. He's already homered in this game. Popped up. Fortes makes the grab, and there's two gone. Now batting, the designated hitter. So here's the Braves designated hitter, Marcelo Zuna. Ozuna, a member of the 1000 Hit Club, and he's a former Silver Slugger recipient in the National League. Left field. Bethancourt makes the catch inning over. But the long ball was working in this inning. Not once, but twice. We're through six full. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. We go to the top of the seventh. Now it's the DH, Jake Berger. And a pitch. And that's in for a strike. I really like how he's been attacking hitters early in at bats. He's thrown strikes on the first pitch to over 70% of the guys he's faced in this one. And here it comes. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0 and 2. The pitch. And down on strikes he goes. One gone here. Well, he's going to have some thinking to do when he leaves the ballpark after this one. That was his third strikeout, and this one looking, obviously, so he's been a little overmatched. He's got to find a way just to be more competitive up there at the plate. Bethancourt in the box now. No balls and a strike. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, he's gotten ahead with two pitches down in the zone. He has plenty of options right here. He can go up, he can go away, he can add velocity, he can subtract. Swing and a miss, and he is down on strikes for the third straight at bat. Two outs, base is empty. Jacob Berry now at the plate. And that's down and away. Well, as good as things can be, it can be a tough day at the office, even for the skippers. Seeing the offense just sputter, not able to get anything going. Next offering is in for a strike. Inside, just missed. 
it softly on the ground to third. Guillaume whips it to first on the run. Third out, and that ends the frame. And the Marlins down quietly. They trail in this one 11 to nothing. And welcome back. Bottom of the seventh. And now Luis Guillaume. And he deals. Towards first. And he takes it himself for the out. Good arm side run and sink on that pitch right there. Got inside on him and got him to bounce into that out. And next for Atlanta, Orlando Arcia. Three pitch strikeout last time up. Got to put up more of a fight in this one. And first offering is fouled off. Look out. That ball was smoked. Man, I am so relieved that they have this netting down the lines. Just ensure safety for the fans. Last thing is a player you want to look up and see a fan get hit. And that one pulled foul. And a pitch. Swing and a ball hammered. Left field. This one's got a chance. And that one's gone. His ninth homer of the year. And they tack on to their lead. It's 12-0. High fastballs, especially with good velocity, can be really hard to catch up to. But he's Stays tall, his top hand works extremely well, and he absolutely clobbered it. JT Shagwa on the pitch here. Well, they need someone to stop the bleeding and keep the score right where it is. Seems like a tough task today with the way this lineup is swinging it. Back to the leadoff spot in the Braves lineup. Now, Ronald Acuna Jr. In the air to left center. And makes the grab. Out number two. Now batting. First baseman. Matt Olsen. Matt Olsen up to the plate. And the way he's going in this one, we've been waiting for his spot to come around again. All right, listen, everyone. Stop what you're doing right now. This guy's got two home runs already. Now he's going for number three. And it's fouled away. And he'll one. Tapped at the plate, but it's a foul ball. The 2 Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And that is the third out of the inning. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. We look ahead to inning number eight. You're watching Atlanta Braves baseball on the show South. Back here in Atlanta, ready to begin the eighth. And now the right fielder, Herrar Encarnacion. The pitch. That's in there. Strike one. Sale. Still out there to pitch the eighth and working with a big lead. He's been excellent, really on his game in this one. And at this point, he wants to finish what he started. He handles it himself, and that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. And now, Peyton Burdick. 
Is there a debate to be had about shutting him down, maybe to preserve some bullets given the score? Absolutely. When you consider over the course of a long season, guys putting a lot of stress on that elbow, on that shoulder, but you also have to pry the ball out of a hand of a guy like this because he's so competitive. The 0-2. Fights it off. He'll see another. Next pitch misses. And that's ball one. On the ground, right side. Throws the first. Two up, two down. Now batting. Catcher. Nick. Four down. Nick Fortes, the next up for the Marlins. <whistles> to third, Guillaume. Tosses to first. That ends the frame. And one, two, three, go the Marlins. Hasn't been their day. It's 12-0. Welcome back out of the bottom of the eighth. And now it's the switch hitting second, second baseman, Ozzy Albies. The pitch. That one is absolutely belted. And it's off the wall. Well, Singy, he is locked in there. Well, he's really slowed the game down, and it's like he's moving in full speed, and everybody is a step or two behind. The way that he squared up that baseball tells me that he is seeing it like a beach ball. Digging in, Michael Harris. At the ball. That misses the zone. Ball one. one and oh. Albies aboard here at first with nobody out. Next offering is foul back. On a line, base hit. Lead runner holds up. They're at first and second with nobody out. Sean Murphy next up for the Braves. He's already homered here in this one. There's a swing and a drive. And gone. He powers that one out to left. He's done it again. His second homer of the game. It's 15-0. A good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. New arm out of the bullpen, Anthony Bender. He's into the game with the bases empty. Now, here is Jared Kellner. Oh, can't pick it up cleanly. Challenged him with the fastball right in the heart of the zone, and he was clearly ready to jump all over it. And next is the designated hitter, Marcelo Zuna. And he swings and misses, and it's nothing at one.
right handed reliever and that one fouled off. Nobody out runner at first. Swing and a ball hammered left field way back there. Gone. Home run number 30 on the year and they throw a pair on the board. It's 17 to nothing. Versus power right there, like two locomotives colliding. Who's going to win? But a really good job there by the hitter getting the top hand working. How is that fastball out of here? Now in for the Braves, Luis Guillorme. Line to right, and that'll be a base hit. Didn't take long to get a result for that at bat. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. So now to the plate for Atlanta. Orlando Arcia. That one misses. Ball one. Runner at first with no outs here. Ground ball left side could be two. Fires to second for one. Now to first, and it's a double play. I think there's always something pretty about watching a 5-4-3 double play get turned. I mean, just seeing the ball whipped around the diamond with quickness and accuracy, that was nice. Here's Ronald Acuna Jr. at the plate. This guy has turned into a beast. Line drive, base hit. And that means Matt Olson will have a chance to hit. These guys today are so great with handling now, velocity. They're base. seeing high speeds Matt. day after day, and a nice job oh, of turning man. that one around. Man at first, Matt Olson. Next up for the Braves. Hard hit, right side. He'll do it himself. That's out number three. But the long ball was working in this inning. Not once, but twice. Last chance coming up here for the Marlins. Back at Truist Park, all set to start the ninth in this one. Now it's the shortstop, Vidal Brujan. Sale, back to work. In for a strike, going one. And that one missing low. Have you ever caught a foul ball as a fan? Only as a broadcaster, not as a fan. You? I haven't been in many games as a fan. Softly hit the third. Sends it to first. And the leadoff man retired here in the ninth. The first base here, number nine, John Bell. Here's Josh Bell. The lefty closing in on 100 pitches. Rips one to right, and it goes just foul. Well, they gave up on that pitch early, and it ended up staying in the zone. I'm sure he's kicking himself and would like that pitch again. Comes up empty on the swing, 0-2 now. Liner to second, it picked on the hop. The throw, and they're down to their last out. Second 
So it's their last chance in this one. Now here is Luis Arias. First pitch doesn't find the zone. That clips the corner. That pitch started in and ended up on the outside edge. Just changing planes and very difficult, especially for a left-handed hitter to track. Fly ball down the line. And it drops in. You know, I was watching his rounds during batting practice today. So impressed with his ability to let the ball travel, go back up the middle and the other way. Sometimes when you step in the box during the game, you get a little anxious and you get away from that. But so far, I've seen him stay consistent with his pregame preparation. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. He'll circle the bases his 17th of the year. It's 17 to 2. With a low 90s fastball, you have to live on the edges and hit your spots. If you don't, you'll get hit hard. Really good swing there. Patient, waited for it. It was like BP all over again. Base is empty with two away. Here's the left fielder, Christian Bethencourt. There's a strike. That misses the zone. One ball, one strike. And a good eye there. The 2 1. Swing and a miss. He's had a tough day at the plate. Three strikeouts already. It's hard not to think negative, but you got to find a way to somehow center up the baseball and put it in play. Battling here as he fouls it away. Line drive, base hit. That's now three hits in a row for the offense. Hooked around that pitch on the outside, but he was still able to square it up pretty nicely. And that takes quick, strong wrist to pull that off. Barry in the box with two gone. And takes a look at a called strike. Arcia, he's in there. Multi-hit game for him now, and with the lack of results he's been having lately, I'm sure he's feeling some relief. Just a little roller to the pull side, definitely out in front of the pitch away, but it wasn't one the defense could make a play on. Now the batter now, Perrar Encarnacion. Bethencourt, the lead runner out at second. Barry at first, two out of the inning. Swing and a bouncer, and that is the ball game. It seemed like from the first pitch of this ball game, this guy was going to get it done. A quality start, who knew he'd throw a complete game and get the victory. But an excellent job of continuing to just throw what the catcher put down. He navigated through this ball game, a jam here, a jam there. But ultimately, it was an outstanding outing. So this one got a little out of hand. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chomby. Talk to you soon. Thank you.